Welcome to In the Envelope, a podcast from Backstage, the number one resource for actors and talent seekers. I am your host, Jack Smart, awards editor at Backstage, and I'm here to guide you through every aspect of the entertainment industry with the help of some of your favorite stars. These intimate, inspirational conversations with today's most award-worthy film, television, and theater artists provide you, dear listener, advice on how to live the creative life, personal stories of success and failure alike, and maybe, just maybe, a tantalizing glimpse in the envelope. We are diving in. Um, welcome, listeners, to another episode of In the Envelope, and welcome back to Casey Howe. How are you today? I'm great. How are you doing, Jack? <laughs> I'm good. I'm looking at you and, our, and your home Zoom, your Zoom from home, at all of your beautiful paintings <laughs> in the background. <laughs> They're prints. They're prints. Prince. We were going for a Gertrude, um, a Gertrude Stein salon look. It really is. That, it's like yeah, a museum wing. The, yeah, that's what we were but going very for. very homey like, still. Yeah. 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 Amazing. So for all of you listeners, it's a bunch of reprints of, and let's, uh, mediocre at best, let's be honest. No. Well, um, Zoom, it looks great. <laughs> thank you. It's great for Zoom. Um, yes, we're impressionist uh, painting. So some big, Love some it. small, sort of all over one of the walls. So you And can all you can see on my, <laughs> yeah, all you can see in terms of my visuals is, of course, the Merrill bag. Merrill. Which, you know, you miss it. <laughs> on you brand. Know. On brand. I do. Oh, Remember when we had an office? Yeah, that was funny. That was cute. That was Way, cute. like at this point, over a year ago, we last had an yeah, office. Yeah, I know. Crazy. I know. Listeners who maybe don't know Casey Howe, how could you not? But Casey Howe, uh, what is your title and what do you do at Backstage again? <laughs> She's I... a co parent of this podcast, first of all, for those who don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm in this family structure. I'm like, <laughs> The, I'm like the maternal or paternal, I guess would be there, but like the grandmother who like still <laughs> lives with everyone and like takes care of some people, yes. but like isn't really responsible. And sort of by the yes. end of the day, just has a glass of wine and is sitting in the corner and being like, I don't know what's happening here. What is going on? Um, yeah, like no. a legacy, <laughs> like a legacy name with the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Um, But I am the executive director of media and I focus on working with our um, studio and network partners around award season campaigns and um, helping them structure, you know, different content and different media to get everybody's attention and say, hey, you should really check this out and and consider it. So that's what I spend my days doing. Very much a year round effort. Yes, yes. Um, and we last spoke, I believe, just before kind of the the usual mayhem of Film and Guild award season. So just, you know, quick summary. How is award season going for you? What is uh, what is unique about this award season? Wow. Um, what isn't unique? Um, let's see. Right. So, so this fall award season, which we definitely touched on, but it's sort of rounding out now. And we sort of, uh, when we spoke last time, I believe we were predicting what was going to happen in the schedule. And now it's really Mm. sort of all um, shook out. So uh, everything was really just pushed back timeline wise, but uh, everybody did a really great job on pulling things together. And I, when I say everybody, I'm referring to, you know, the different awards and guilds and Mm. um, different shows and the producers that work on all of those to still make it really special and make it unique and bring attention to all of these great performances and films and, and make it work when, you know, they very easily could have just said, well, what are we going to do? So kudos to them. And um, I think it all went relatively smoothly and was spaced out nicely. And so, um, so good job, everybody. Well done. (laughs) Yeah. And that's, that's leads beautifully into today's episode. So listeners, today's episode is all things film independent and their spirit awards. You and I, love the Spirit Awards. I mean, we backstage we goes do. way back with Film Independent, of course. We have a very similar audience. So um, the Spirit Awards are coming up. They're airing on April 22nd, and they are, like Casey was just saying, like they've adapted to the times, and we will see how it shakes out. And the only certainty is that there's no certainty, that there, it will be different from any other year past. But today's guest is Josh Welsh, who is the president of Film Independent. 
He's been with the organization a long time, so he can speak to everything they offer in terms of resources for indie filmmakers, but also to the Spirit Awards themselves. They will not be on the beach in Santa Monica Pier uh, the day Which before the Jack's Oscars. The saddest year. moment. It's I his know. Favorite award show. <laughs> He Are you tired of me talking about it every it's year? His favorite award show because he gets to wear loafers and shorts, <laughs> and it's on the beach. So I mean, an award show where I get to wear shorts—that's <laughs> Jack's. That's a Jack Smart award show. <laughs> I don't think I have worn shorts, by the way. But an award show where I oh, could really? wear shorts. I, was, I feel like yeah. I feel like there was always talk of shorts and a blazer and a tie. Yeah, I've like and wanted like loafers. to. Loafers. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. definitely okay. the loafers. And then there, it's been I've workshopped. done. It's been workshopped and you're my personal, yeah, consultant and stylist and all of this. But I've every year after the show, I do walk out onto the beach and you got to take the loafers off and go strolling in the beach. And like, this is Beautiful. the distillation of me. Like, I love, I love that. And I also yes. love indie film. And so of course the film yes. Independent Spirit Awards honor indie film. Everyone calls them like- And television this year. Oh, and television. Thank you for reminding and me. And TV. So, what a great year to check in with Josh and to check in with Film Independent because, of course, it's a huge change year with the with the pandemic. But the Spirit Awards have added TV, which is huge. And they you and did. I have we've kind of wanted we've kind of wondered about that for years. Like, could they add TV? Like, yes, they, yes, they could. There is such a thing as indie TV. It sort of depends on what your definition of indie is, which Josh and I got into a little bit. We're always saying, what a strong year for film, but obviously it's a very strong year for TV because every year recently is a, re- is a great year for TV, right? For sure. So no, it was uh, really great of them to, to try and take that on and navigate you know, what that looks like from, a, from an indie structure and include television yeah. in it. And I think you know, that indie film just always deserves so much recognition and having a standalone organization that represents it and also having a show that represents it, you know, an awards presentation that says, look, we're just gonna take these indie films and this is what we mean by indie and this is what we mean by this tier and that tier. Mm -hmm. And we're really gonna honor those because they don't always get all of the resources and opportunities that some of these other films do and and they, you know, are standouts. And I think also it's fun that they call them out so much, just meaning, a lot of times we don't realize which films are indie films sure. versus bigger films mm-hmm. um, for many different reasons. So I think to have something recognized as indie is really great and and draws a little bit more um, attention to it. And, and probably yeah. from a filmmaker standpoint is, is a nice feather in their cap to say, yes, you know, hey, yes, I can do it on this budget, but I can also do it on this budget because I'm really passionate about it. And and sometimes they have to press through in those occasions. And sometimes you can get somebody who sees it your way and can give you the mm. extra boost. So yeah. um, it's really great, I think, for the film industry and really wonderful to open that up to television. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's such a good point too, that that's a really central function of a great award show is highlighting great work that audiences might not have other heard and providing like a quality standard, which the spirits have done for over 30 years. Yes. And their mission is so in keeping with ours, like, as you also mentioned, like, making an indie film is so hard. Being any kind of filmmaker is so hard, but starting from scratch, as many of these filmmakers often are, we want, we backstage champions them in the same way that Film Independent does in the same way that that inevitably the Spirit Awards do. Spirit Awards are are championing the likes of Frances McDormand and Adam Sandler and Jennifer Lopez, depending on the year. I mean, (laughs) the Spirit Awards have been plenty mainstream, especially in recent years. But, um... It is one of my favorites. I can't say it's my favorite favorite, but it is one of my favorites. And so, so pleased to dedicate a whole episode of In the Envelope to all things film independent and all things Spirit Awards. Um, Listener, if you're a working actor, definitely stay tuned to hear this whole interview. Josh is a former actor himself. Casey, did you know this? I did not. Who used backstage. Yes. I love it. I love it. Oh, I can't wait to listen to this interview. It's going to be so good. I'm sure he was really passionate about it. Yeah. This is great. And he, I, I knew he was a good fit, but once I learned he was a former actor, I was like, okay, you are right at home on this podcast. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, I love that. I love when people get to share their backstage stories. It makes me, me too. so happy. Me too. It makes me, me too. so happy. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us and helping me introduce anything else for our listeners. I'm sure we'll hear from you again soon. Hey, Emmys are right around the corner. Yes. I know. Here we go. <laughs> We're doing it. We're doing it. We're back on track. Already Here underway. we go. Yep. Already underway. We're doing it. But yes. <laughs>
No, thank you so much for having me, Jack. And of and course. on behalf of all of our listeners, we just want to say thank you. And you do such a marvelous job each week. So thank you for all that you thank do. You. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, co-parent or grandmother of the podcast. <laughs> that was very Fairy godmother. <laughs> oh, I like that. I'll be that. I'll the be fairy that. godmother of the podcast, because you waved a magic wand and made it happen. There it is. Well, I waved my magic wand and then everybody else made the magic happen. <laughs> but I'll yeah, take yeah, credit yeah. for the crazy person standing <laughs> with a wand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you. That's so perfect. What a perfect oh one gosh. to end on. Okay, thank you, Casey. Let's take a quick break and then get to this interview. Next Thursday, April 22nd, tune in to the premier awards event for the independent film and television community. The 2021 Film Independent Spirit Awards will celebrate the year's most exceptional films, TV series, and artists in a special virtual presentation hosted by SNL's Melissa Villasenor. Watch the Film Independent Spirit Awards live on IFC and AMC Plus Thursday, April 22nd at 10 p.m. Eastern. See you there. And now, here's our interview with Film Independent President Josh Welsh. Josh, hi. Hey, Jack. Nice to meet you. I'm so happy to be talking to you. So good to meet you over the, over the magic of the internet. Likewise. <laughs> Have you done interviews like in this era? Is this Zoom interview format like a thing? It, it's, yes, everything <laughs> has become Zoom. Yeah, yeah. It's bizarre, but it works, you know? It, yeah, it uh, I mean, I find, I mean, for our work at Film Independent, it's, um, I mean, I miss the social connection and seeing people mm. in person, but the ability to talk to people all over the world and have, you know, whether it's doing interviews or doing panels with filmmakers for the film independent audience, it's been great. Mm. It's really broadened our, our community and um, just the conversation, the, t- the people that we can talk to. So Isn't that I love interesting. it. Yeah. The, the broadening of the audience. Of course, I'm going to ask you, I want to ask you about all things it's sort of like all things film independent before and after. This would be a completely different interview without a pandemic. You know, we are Backstage's podcast and we we are also awards focused. So we we did an interview with yep. Kathy Connell related to the SAG Awards and we've done features on the Gothams and we've covered all the big award shows. And I am a film independent member and I am a big fan of the Spirit Awards. Awesome. I've attended the past couple of years and I'm so <laughs> bummed I probably won't. I assume there's no... Um, <sighs> in-person attending option this year. I don't think. Not this year. It's no. very strange. And I, I that yeah. one really does bum me out as well. You know, know, not being on the beach, but... And, know. you know, when the pandemic started, we were sure that we'd be fine. We're like, well, oh, no, by the Spirit Awards, everything will be back. Yeah. And yeah. and then we were like, hmm, maybe we should... When the, when the Oscars pushed to April, we said, well, mm-hmm. let's follow them because we're always right before the Oscars. Yeah. And... Uh, they thought that would be safe, but you know, it's just we, like everyone. We just you keep checking in, and if it's not safe, we're not doing it. Yeah. But like, what? Is, so, what yeah. are the basics? First of all, what is your um, your title and your role? Like, what do you do at Film Independent? So, I'm uh, I'm the president of Film Independent. Um, I've been with the organization a long time. I can't believe it. It's about almost mm-hmm. twenty years, and um, wow actually started at the organization as a volunteer. I had just moved to LA from uh, the East Coast where I grew up and quickly found Film Independent. I mean, I loved film and actually I was a, an aspiring actor when I moved here. And, okay, um, okay. So, <laughs> so I started volunteering at Film Independent. I thought this is gonna be a great way to meet filmmakers and I'll get cast in their, in their independent ah. films. And one thing led to another and I ended up working at, at Film Independent. Mm-hmm. and. After I pursued acting for a couple of years and I, I did love it, but I eventually transitioned where I what I really loved was working with filmmakers mm-hmm. on the development side. So for about a decade, I was um, I developed the artist development programs at Film Independent. So the labs for writers, directors and producers uh, working with the team that runs Project Involve, our diversity mentorship program. Uh, and things like that, and really getting the chance to work with filmmakers, you know, filmmakers from underrepresented communities, mm-hmm. talented filmmakers who are on the early side of their career, developing new work. And so I was just very much for about a decade, I was doing that. Um, and then at the point when our previous executive director left Don Hudson, and she went over to the Academy, I right. was able to step up into her position. 
Um, so cool. So my role now is, um, you know, is kind of running the organization, working with the staff and the board. It's a lot of fundraising, uh, both mm-hmm. pre-pandemic and definitely during, mm-hmm. um, and managing, you know, the, the finances. Um, and a big part is definitely on the, you know, the Spirit Awards is our big tentpole event every year. Yeah. Um, it's where we celebrate the best of independent film, and it's also a fundraiser for film independent. So it's it's mm-hmm. kind of playing dual roles for us, mm-hmm. and very important on both fronts. So that's that takes up a lot of my time, sure. both the the creative side of the Spirit Awards, but also sort of just operationally how it how it serves the organization's oh, mission. Really producing the Spirit Awards in every sense of the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Very Film cool. Independent produces the show, and yeah. our broadcast partner is IFC. Mm-hmm. We love. We've been with them for I think it's like eighteen years or something. We've been on IFC, mm-hmm. um, but you know, we produce the show and deliver it to them. So awesome. Um, not to sidetrack us too much, but of course, we are backstage. I didn't know that you moved to LA to become an actor, and you were at one point pursuing that. Yeah. Um, are you familiar with backstage at all? Did you ever use backstage? I definitely used it. When I moved out, it was, I had a Thomas guide and backstage were my initial tools and looking at the audition listings in backstage and just reading the articles. It was like, yeah, perfect. Key publication for me. That's so great. That's so, it's so why like backstage and film independent, I think are, we have a lot of the same audience, a lot of the same mission, Mm -hmm. same values. Um, and you are, yeah. you are an actor. You, you were a former actor. You've worked with the filmmakers on the, <laughs> on that side of things, as well as on the development side of things. I didn't know this. I mean, I left, I, I no longer act just because I, I mean, I love what I do at film independent sure. as full time, but, um, one of the, th- and when I started working at film independent, we have, uh, this was a long time ago. We had casting rooms that people could rent out. We still do in our offices. But way back in the day, there would be these auditions held in the film independent offices. So I was there working. I was a volunteer and then an employee working for film independent. But I would see these just on the casting room mm. side. I would just see the volume of actors coming in. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, my God, this like th- seeing firsthand just how challenging it was and just the level of competition and right. the volume of people, I, I was like, okay, that's, that's really hard. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> so it may have influenced my, my career choices, but, <laughs> but I did, I mean, I look back on the time when I moved to LA and was pursuing acting, I loved it because mm. I, I mean, I was new to town, I was discovering the city. And I, I mentioned the Thomas Guide, like driving around to auditions with the Thomas Guide on my yeah. lap and seeing how to get to Studio City, how to get to Hollywood. Like it, I was <laughs> learning all of it and meeting so many great people. Um, and, you know, I did, I mean, I didn't do a lot of work, but I was doing, you know, commercials, student films, short films. I did some extra work. I got some small parts here and there. And um, I ended up becoming, I became a lifetime member of the Actors Studio. You know, I auditioned there and got into the Actors Studio, which I love that community. Hmm. So I think like creatively, it was so rewarding. I did some theater, you know, I did all the things that aspiring and and new actors to LA do. Um, So I really loved it. Um, But I couldn't sustain that and sort of what it took to be full-time at Film Independent. Sure. I almost feel like there's the, the piece of advice there is there's a piece of advice in that um, those who are on the filmmaking side of things, film producing, film development, whatever, it's good for you to have like the really well-rounded sense of the industry. It must inform everything you do to have been on the acting side of things, much in the same way that we like often on this podcast will tell, we've heard it tell told to actors to mm-hmm. be familiar with the behind the camera scene. Yeah, absolutely. And I look at, I mean, I think actors, what actors go through mm-hmm. and what independent filmmakers go through by, and by that, I mean, writers, directors, and producers, like the amount of hustle and ingenuity and creativity that you have to have, mm. you know, creatively and, and on the business side of things, it's like, it's a very similar skill set and sort of tenacity and entrepreneurship Yes, that actors have to have it and do have it. And, and mm. the successful independent filmmakers do too. Totally. Yeah, that is spot on. I mean, this is why I'm so excited to talk to you because the film independent, I just think of as, I, I, I always think of the John Cassavetes Award as the kind of emblematic of like, um, mm-hmm. 
this is an organization that recognizes uh, filmmakers and artists just making stuff for pennies for actual for actually very very low amounts of yeah. money that the money is not the point <laughs> yeah and, yeah um, developing them and upholding them so talk to me about like what is the mission what is film independence whole what are the what are the basics so so film independent um is an organization we've been around for almost 40 years uh based here in los angeles and our mission is, uh, it's quite simple. We champion creative independence in visual storytelling, and we support a community of artists who embody diversity, innovation, and uniqueness of vision. And the first part of that, creative independence in visual storytelling, it, it that might sound like kind of a weird way to phrase it, but what we mean by that is, um, in the early days, it, the term was independent film. And the model was you make, a, you make your low budget feature with credit cards or however you do it, you get into a festival like a Sundance, you sell mm. it to Searchlight and your career is launched. Like that trajectory, which still exists, is sure. back then that was the dominant, that's like what everyone aspired to. And mm. now it's much broader. Like we're supporting people who are foregoing that route and they're going straight into doing episodic work, whether it's for Netflix or Amazon or, or they're creating it totally independently on their own and then selling it. Mm. Um, people who are going into... VR and gaming, but they have a background in original visual storytelling. So we're really much broader than the traditional, we're, we're sort of platform agnostic, I guess you would say. Interesting. Where if you want to do a feature film and sell it out of a festival, that's great. We're here to support you. But we also want to support, and so our programs have grown where we're supporting people who are also doing episodic work, especially very strong in TV now. Yeah. Because there's so much, clearly, you know, so much great totally. work that feels like independent film aesthetically. And this mm -hmm. year at the Spirit Awards, we've actually introduced for the first time five categories celebrating the best independent television. So awesome. And, uh, you know, I'm getting a lot of questions about how can TV be independent and what does that mean? Which are really legitimate questions because mm -hmm. it is sort of hard to parse it out. But um, sure. we feel that is like a major frontier of an area where great storytelling is happening. Yeah. So we want to support that as well. Um, and then the other thing is, um, you know, the, the, we are a community organization. So Film Independent is, uh, you know, unlike the Academy or certain other organizations that are very mm. selective and you have to be invited to join. Film Independent, we're open access. So anyone can join, whether you're a filmmaker or a film lover. And that's why when I moved to L.A., I didn't know anybody. Right. You know, I was looking around like, what's going on? Who can I meet? And it was like Film Independent was like doing so much cool stuff. They were doing social, you know, parties and mixers. They were doing screenings with after parties. They were doing educational stuff. And it was so easy to just, like, yeah, if you want to join, just it's 95 bucks for an yeah. annual membership. And so I was like, oh, well, that's a no brainer. So hmm. that's, and actually, I mean, not, not to go into too much ancient history, but the organization was founded almost 40 years ago by a small group of filmmakers in LA. It was Gregory Nava, um, his then wife, Anna Thomas, and a handful of other people who were written, like they were young, the first wave of independent filmmakers in LA. It's like 1981, 82 in that era. Mm -hmm. And they were like, they were trying to do something new. The independent film hadn't blown up the way it later did. Right. But, but they wanted to make films outside the studio system. They were telling personal idiosyncratic stories. And they said, well, let's, let's put on a conference. Let's, let's, uh, let's get together and see what sort of audience there is. So I, they did their first comments. I believe it was at the Hollywood Roosevelt. And hmm. um, it was a huge turnout. It was sold out. And all these people came and wanted to learn, how can I make my, a film on my own terms? Right. How, what, what does distribution look like? Um, all of that. And it just grew into this organization. But I mention it the, be, because what was unique in that beginning is it was filmmakers helping each other. They were creating an organization by filmmakers for filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And that's very much still today what this organization is. Sure. If you look at our board and even our staff and our membership, of course, it's filmmakers and they're here to like learn and, and get connected and network, but also mm -hmm. to, to help each other. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's from the very beginning to today, that's been sort of who we are. Yeah. Um, another thing I'll say on the, on the, that ties this back to the Spirit Awards a little bit is mm -hmm. um, the, the Spirit Awards is with our big award show. It's always right before the Oscars where we celebrate the best of independent film and now TV. 
the winners are voted on by our members. So if yeah. anyone who's a member of Film Independent can vote on who they think should win the, the awards. And um, our membership has been growing and growing. We're close to 8,000 members now. And mm -hmm. I love the fact that it's open access. I mean, our members are passionate about film. There's no doubt. And they watch all the nominated films and shows. Mm -hmm. um, they also receive links once the... Um, if, if you're a member of Film Independent, you get links to all the nominated films and shows. Yeah. You get to watch them. Now it's all online. Mm -hmm. um, and and you get to vote and be part of that process. And I think, you know, people join for the networking and the educational services that we provide, but they also join for, to be part of that voting experience. Definitely. So, And that 8,000 or so, that's a, a different demographic than any of these other award shows this time of year giving out awards. Um, has it changed also? Is it mostly people in LA or like maybe especially in the last year, are film independent members all over the world? They're all over the world. Cool. It's shocking. You know, we don't have a, unfortunately we don't have a budget for marketing and advertising really. I wish we did, but mm. we're seeing just because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. it started before the pandemic. Honestly, we were noticing the last few years are national and international membership was just going up on its own without us doing a real campaign or anything. Mm -hmm. um, and now during the pandemic, it's taken off. Since March, our international membership is up over 90 percent wow. and it's all over the world. It's interesting to think about film independent as this idea. I, love, I was going to ask you about the, the ancient history. So it's I, I'm so glad you touched on that, because on the one hand, the state of film independent has changed so much since 1981. It's this like mm -hmm. I think of it as this roller coaster especially just looking at this year with, yeah, the blending of TV and film and this pandemic and everything. But film independent is, is both a constant and it's adjusting like to those, to those trends. Yeah. And I think of the Spirit Awards too as being like, uh, about a decade ago, the winners of the Spirit Awards started to also win at the Oscars, which speaks to like the state of indie film and the yeah. mainstream in general. Like you must have seen indie film become we kind of weaving in and out of the mainstream, right? Very much, very much, yeah. And this year is especially interesting. I mean, this is such a crazy year. It's it's an anomaly yeah. because of the pandemic and theaters were shut down and, and release mm -hmm. patterns of films were changed so much. But if you look at the awards this year, I mean, for us, of course, the awards are always independent films, but I think you're going to see that across the awards landscape. Mm -hmm. The top films of 2020 yeah. are independent. I yeah. mean, they just, they are. Yeah. Um, All those so, big budget yeah. films were delayed. And so maybe next year we're looking at a year of only big budget films. I don't know. <laughs> it's very Well, weird. I will go, I'll go out on a limb here and say, I, I mean, the, the industry is changing so much and it, yeah. it has been for a while and continues to. But I'm going to say, I truly believe the future of film is independent. I mean, that is the future. Mm -hmm. And it might sound... Uh, counterintuitive to say that given you've got these massive companies like Disney with Marvel and Netflix and Amazon. There's so these yeah. massive companies, there's so much media consolidation happening. But the engine that drives it all is the creativity of the the storytellers, the mm -hmm. filmmakers. Yeah. And I look at a filmmaker like Chloe Zhao, who mm -hmm. this year is in, in all the award shows, including the Spirit Awards, nominated for her beautiful film Nomad Land. Mm -hmm. She's also doing a Marvel film. Yeah. She's she is the director everyone is talking about, everyone wants to work with, and it's for good reason. She is an authentic, original voice. And yeah. she came, she went through our labs at Film Independent when so she cool. was doing her first film, Songs My Brothers Taught Me. And she's an example of somebody who has a true voice and vision and isn't swayed by you know the market or fads. Like she tells the stories that she wants and people respond to and they wanna work with her. And I feel like these massive companies they have they have they have the economic might and uh, they've got the distribution reach, but th mm -hmm. they have nothing if they don't have the voice of the storytellers. Yes. And those storytellers, more and more, are coming out of independent film. I mean, you just you just see it over and over. People like Barry Jenkins and yes. Lulu Wong, and mm -hmm. you know, it's like they're like incredible storytellers. They have a unique perspective, um, and eventually they're noticed and it's not about it, it i'm not saying that success is measured by getting a studio deal at all it's it's measured by right. being able to continue telling 
their own types of stories, but yeah. it, it can be at a big budget level or, or a more indie level. Um, but I'm, I'm so excited by, I just think independent film, even more than in the past, is going to be the place where people come when they're looking for new talent. And, um, yeah. and, and absolutely, that, I mean, another defining aspect of independent film is this is where independent film has traditionally been more open to filmmakers from communities that, you know, are underrepresented in the industry. So oh, yeah. filmmakers of color, women, LGBTQ, people with disabilities, there's more opportunity to break into independent film. Mm -hmm. And for those, the talented voices there to break out and cross over is, it's, again, it's, it's all being driven by independent film. So mm -hmm. when things seem scary, and they often do, mm -hmm. when you just look at like what's happening, you're like, oh my God, yeah. everything's becoming Disney, everything's becoming Marvel, it's, <laughs> everything's compressing. I'm like, it's fun. And, and we're independent filmmakers, and I suspect actors too, right? You can feel so powerless as an actor. You're like, oh, I have no power. I just, I audition. I'm waiting for someone to say yes. But mm -hmm. ultimately, they, those big companies have nothing if they don't have you, if they don't have the, the, the talented actor who's got that original presence on screen mm -hmm. or the talented writer, director. That's, they have nothing. So the power, even though it doesn't feel like it always, I think the power really does reside with the independence. Totally. totally. I mean, I, I love that. That's so, it's so inspiring. It's exactly the kind of thing we want to hear on this podcast that like, I think you're right. The, the the trends of these big tech companies does tend to almost obfuscate the role of the individual artist and their vision. But that without that creativity, without that spirit, I also just love this idea that like it's not the studio deal that defines success or even awards. It's just the opportunity to continue. It's opportunity to continue mm -hmm. telling your stories like as independently as possible. Can you talk to me about what is the what is the um, origin of Spirit Awards? Like why? What does that refer to? Because I think it speaks to what you're what you're just talking about. So the Spirit Awards started uh, 36 years ago, and it, so it was the early days of the organization. Mm -hmm. And um, it really was a brilliant move on the part of the founders of the organization to create an. I mean, they, they said at that time the Oscars were the big show, and the Oscars mm -hmm. didn't. There was never independent film in the Oscars. That they didn't care. It was all right. studio films, right. and there was this growing. Um, community of filmmakers who saw they were making great films that weren't being recognized. So the organization said, let's start our own award show. Mm -hmm. And they had no money to do it. So they said, well, well, we'll be a day before the Oscars because talent will be in town. We won't have to fly them out. Like we don't have money to fly them out. So we'll oh, do that's it. that's why. We'll okay. Piggyback on the Oscars. I so we've, see. and we've stayed there. It's very convenient. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it's like people are in town and, and here to celebrate. So yeah. But the idea was just to celebrate the films that were not being recognized in the bigger shows. Okay. And then, as you noted, like in recent years, you start seeing more and more the Oscars are nominating yeah. independent films. Yeah. And again, that just goes back to my claim that the future is independent. Like that's yeah. where great work. I mean, the studios, I, I'm not going to go on and knock studio filmmaking. They make mm. a very particular type of film very well. And it, but it's increasingly, you know, it's the big tent poles, it's the franchises, it's superhero yeah. movies that travel, do billions of dollars in the international marketplace. But mm -hmm. what, if you look at films that used to be nominated for Oscars, like back in the seventies and into the eighties, studios don't make those kinds of movies anymore. Right. Like ordinary people or, you know, films like that, that, that character driven stories, adult dramas, mm -hmm. um, anything outside of the tentpole, they're just not doing anymore. So the Spirit Awards has really claimed that space. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the Spirit, I don't know how they came up with the name Spirit Awards now that you mentioned that, but mm -hmm. it is, it's, uh, to me, it's, it's, it's a little, it's hard to define. Like it, it's mm -hmm. the spirit of independence. Yeah. It's, it's not rigid rules saying this is, or this is not an independent film. We, right. we do have criteria that we use in our nominations, but it's, it's really driven by the aesthetic quality of the film more than anything. So right. does it have that original voice, an original provocative voice and subject matter? Is it trying to do something new? Is it pushing boundaries in some way? Um, is it made, you know, not for $10 billion? Like, you know, it's, it's a little bit, you have to watch the films to really, and dig in to determine whether it's 
going to be nominated for the Spirit Awards or not. But that's so it's it's a spirit of the film rather than exactly. some strict guidelines. Yeah, it's both. I mean, there I like that's true. The guideline of it's um, films that are made for twenty two and a half million or less. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But it's anything within that realm that sort of speaks to more of a vision, more of like the spirit of a storyteller or a group of storytellers who are thinking independently of 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 what I don't know of I guess of the studio system yeah. or I guess of trying to adapt your ideas to fit some audience. No, instead, it's I have this vision, I have this personal story, I'm executing it with like as unfiltered as possible. I feel yeah. Like. Exactly. You know, with Lulu Wong tells this story, I've read in interviews with her where she talks about when she was, it took her a long time to get the farewell made. Mm -hmm. And she had lots of companies interested in it. And she had all these meetings and they would pitch it like, could you, could you put a white protagonist in or could you, could you have it set all in the U S because we don't want to have it in the the language barriers too much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Let's make it not Chinese. And, and everything was like, (laughs) trying to make it fit in some marketing bubble. And Mm -hmm. she just was like, no, I'm going to tell my story. This is my family and I'm going to tell it the right way. And she persevered and got it told that way. So that Mm -hmm. is, that's the spirit of independence right there. Totally. And not caving in to that basically. Yeah. 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 Sticking to your guns. Cause perseverance is, I mean, it's been said on this podcast, it's been said to backstage so many times, perseverance is the main ingredient. Um, And I love, I love your point about, Actors and independent filmmakers are very much on the same trajectory. They're, they're very much working with the same amount of resources. And uh, one of those resources has to be perseverance and like gumption and grit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think, I mean, that's another area where I, I feel like actors clearly see the value in independent film. Like yeah. that, that Actors take risks on independent working with a first time director, working for mm-hmm. a film where, y- you know, you're not get you may not be getting your quote or you're working for a very modest fee mm-hmm. um, or you don't have a honey wagon or, you know, things like that. But I mean, again, you look at Nomadland where Chloe got uh, Francis McDormand to play the lead role and David sure. Strathairn is in it. But aside from that. They were they were living in a van. They were driving around the American Southwest. <laughs> they had no resources. Yeah. And but those actors, they want to work with somebody like Chloe because they're drawn to somebody with that kind of vision. And I think I mean that's what I always tell independent filmmakers is like, when you're casting, you're going to have it, it's hard to get actors to read your stuff. It's you you're, you might have big movie stars in mind that you're not going to be able to reach. But right. if you have a great script and a great project talent, meaning actors are going to be so excited to work with you and they're going to contribute so much. They're going to make your film real. So I think, you know, it's it's obviously a, a hard process, the casting and then the financing, you know, which comes first and all of that. But the actors are driven to great independent film. So, you know, it's beautiful. This year, the actors nominated in the Spirit Awards, we have hmm. this year, so we always have our, the, the Spirit Awards that you, for all the categories, you have five nominees per category. And this year mm-hmm. in Best Female Lead, we have six because the nominating, the way our process works, we have nominating mm-hmm. committees who in the fall are watching all of the nominated films and arguing about them and coming up with the nominations. Cool. And there were like an embarrassment of riches when it came yeah. to that category. Mm-hmm. And so you've got, you know, Nicole Bahari from Miss Juneteenth, yes. which is an incredible performance to Viola Davis, in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. I mean, it's just <laughs> electrifying to Carrie Mulligan, Promising Young Woman, cool. Francis McDormand, um, Sydney Flanagan in Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, oh which God. is like, yeah. you know, that's just tour de force, like beautiful yeah. acting. And it's like, uh, and then Julia Garner in The Assistant, which is another mm-hmm. like very understated, quiet performance that is just, and you know, and so different from other things that Julia has done. Like, it's mm-hmm. such a, that's what I, the other thing I love where for independent film with actors is it gives mm-hmm. actors a chance to do something that, you know, you get typecast as an actor. And if you're working a lot in TV or studio films, you're going to get the same kind of roles. But independent film gives you the chance to try something totally different. Totally. I mean, yeah. Carrie Mulligan in Promising Young Woman, that is a, I've never seen her do something like that. It's, right. a, you know, these are different. bigger risks, right? Like these are bigger swings for the fences that may not pay off literally or figuratively but but yeah. as an artist these are the kinds of things that you're talking about these are the kinds of things that feed your 
your artistic mission, your artistic creativity, all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. We're always asking for, so we're always asking for advice. And of course, I want to ask you, you can, of course, speak to advice to filmmakers. So I want to ask you about that. And we, we have to touch on all of the rest of the year's film independent programming. But first of all, Great. like, what is your advice for specifically actors for like the type of person who is listening to this podcast and is a, you know, a reader of backstage uh, and a prospective member of film independent, <laughs> you know, how do you, how do you navigate? How do you recommend that they navigate the industry? Cause as you say, they're often, as I've said before, they are the least empowered. They are often waiting to be given the permission or be given the power to, to tell stories. Yeah. I think, I mean, to when I think that's really the key is whatever you can do in your life to assert some control and direction to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that can be hard to figure out. It can, it can take a lot of different forms, but I mean, obviously you need to have the tenacity and perseverance and go out and, you know, work on your craft, do all this, do the work, put in the work, be a good actor, get out on auditions, all the hustle. But beyond that, or in addition to that, you have to just, I think it's very important to feel like you're driving things that you're not just always waiting for somebody to say yes and pick you. So mm. like, if you admire a filmmaker, like, like the, again, with independent film, it's not hard to... You, Pursue the people that who whose work inspires you. Yeah. Find a way to either get in front of them or or just and you know, that's that's a, a tricky thing to navigate. But how do you, you know, follow the people whose work you admire and get in their orbit however you can and work with them. Tell your agent you want to work with these people. Cool. Um uh take have the agency where you're not just waiting for someone to tell you oh you have this audition oh you got this part or you didn't like drive the train yourself in whatever way that you can i think for actors that's really important um but beyond that i think um i mean i would say one piece of advice i would say is be kind to yourself because it's it's so mm -hmm. hard just being a creative whether you're an actor or a writer or director mm -hmm. it's it's brutal it is so competitive it's so hard you can get discouraged and you just have to take care of yourself, be kind to yourself, recognize that what you're doing is really challenging um, and uh, just cut yourself some slack, That's, you know? Yeah, like totally. really just take care of yourself, your mental health, your physical health. Um, it's a marathon. It takes mm. years. I mean, a lot of time, with the funny thing with independent film is you have these people who are perceived as like an overnight success and Yes. More often than not, that is not the case. They've been working for years before they became an overnight success. And yeah. um, they were working in obscurity and, and they were making yeah. good stuff and bad stuff. Yeah. And and then they suddenly break through and you're like, oh, my God, this person, you know, a couple of years ago, I remember Boots Riley. I was not familiar with him before uh, his first feature. And um Sorry to bother you. And I, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my God, this guy came out of nowhere. He's so great. Well, Boots has been around for years. Like, yeah just pushing his work and he's been working as a musician and, and, mm. uh, you know, he was not new. I didn't know him, but, and so he, and he felt in the media like this, the new sensation, but he'd been working for years right. and years. And I think it's the same for actors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just Absolutely. have a sense. It's a marathon, be kind to yourself. Um, but the other thing, and I mean, I'm sure every, everyone's already heard this, but like, you have to be prepared when your chance comes, you've got to be ready. So like have your craft, you know, you be working all the time yeah. as an actor on developing your craft, on being ready so that when you get that audition and you're there with a director whose work you admire, you're able to step up and, and deliver the goods. Yeah, that's spot on. That's excellent advice. Um, both to be kind to yourself, but also you got to know it's hard and you got to be ready for that. That's really true. Yeah. You, you, as you said earlier yeah. about the seeing the, all of those actors go through the casting rooms, like that's the tip of the iceberg of what is required of an actor and required of a good actor. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I so, would say, I'll just go back to my personal yeah. story and as a shameless plug for film independent, I legitimately <laughs> would say join film independent or that's join cool. other organizations like that. Like you, yeah. you can't underestimate the value of that. It just gets like a social community that you can yeah. be part of and it's it's fun you get to, you know there's parties there's screenings there's conferences Super you know fun. that you can take advantage of but it's also it's just like you don't know what's going to come of it and i've seen so i mean I, i've seen countless examples where somebody meets somebody at mm -hmm. a 
cocktail party or at the, the number of deals that are done at the Spirit Awards where somebody, in fact, the year that Chloe Zhao won a Spirit Award for her film, I think it was The Rider, mm-hmm. uh, Frances McDormand was there with three billboards. Oh my God. Uh, and they sp- they met before, mm-hmm. but right after the Spirit Awards, they went and they had a meeting immediately oh after the Spirit Awards where they came up with Nomadland. Oh, my God. I mean, they're like, we got to work together. And so, it's, cool. so you never know. I mean, that's a crazy example. But it, those things happen sure. all the time. Yeah. So join Film Independent or find another organization where you're going to, like, have an access. The great thing about Film Independent is you really do have the chance to meet writers, directors, composers, editors. Like, it's got kind of exactly. everyone in all crew mm-hmm. positions are there. Um, but speaking of, so what, what other, other than the Spirit Awards, what else is happening year round? Again, I guess pre, pre-pandemic and then post-pandemic, what are the other um, resources available to directors and writers and everyone? So pre-pandemic, um, Film Independent has a really, a lot of people know us for, just for the Spirit Awards because that's like our most public facing thing. But Makes sense. Yeah. Um, we produce very robust programming all year long. We have a program called Film Independent Presents where we're screening shows and movies for our members. All of it is free. And uh, that's actually become so robust in the online space where we have Mm -hmm. so many screenings and and Q&As and conversations with filmmakers. Um, We have educational programs on both the craft and the business of filmmaking. So if you want to learn about financing or post-production, uh, the current state of, uh, you know, working with sales agents, like really nitty gritty nuts and bolts stuff that's going to be valuable to filmmakers. We do that. And then we have our artist development programs, which these are, so our educational programs are open to the public as either free or paid events. Anyone can go if you're interested. Our artist development programs, you have to apply to be accepted into. But we, we support over 100 filmmakers a year in those programs. We have labs for writers, directors, producers working in film, television, and documentary, where you come with a project that you're working on. Either it's a a work in progress or it's a script you're developing. Um, And we help people, whether they're a writer, director, and producer, to move it forward. And oftentimes, you know, it, it it can take a couple of years or even a few years to get a film greenlit in the indie space. So... Sometimes we'll have somebody go through the screenwriting lab and then the directing lab and then the producing lab. We have a financing market called Fast Track where we take uh, projects. Um, They don't always do all of them. It's, you know, it's you have to apply to each one. But um, Mm. so some and then we have a mentorship program project involved, which is now, I think, 28 years old. And that's a great program where we take 30 filmmakers from underrepresented communities. And it's a, a year long program where you get one on one mentorship. You get uh, ongoing master classes in in filmmaking, craft, and and business, Gosh. Uh, and then we give the filmmakers m- cash and production resources to make short films. And typically, mm-hmm. the a group of thirty filmmakers they'll make about six films a year, working in teams. And there's a sort of internal selection process for how that happens. And those films are beautiful. I mean, the caliber of work coming out of the program is really high. They're getting into major festivals. They're getting picked up, licensed by places like HBO or PBS, d- different outlets are screening the films. Um, NAACP screened some of the short films coming out of Project Involved this year. It's really so cool, beautiful work. So there's enormous things that filmmakers can do if, if they're members of Film Independent who are these, all year and long. You, you mentioned, I believe, Lulu Wong. Or like, who are these mentors and other people who are leading these, these classes? So, great question. So, at the heart of Film Independent, like, and this again goes back to our, our, our founding, the model that we're based on is mentorship of filmmakers giving back. So we don't, like, we don't hire, for the most part, we do not hire, like, uh, film professors or mm. older, f- I mean, it's, we're, it, we'll hire people, we'll, we'll work with people of any age, but we, what we tend to go for our filmmaker, the perfect model to me is, a filmmaker who's gone through our programs, you know, and then made their first feature and now is on the other side, will come back and mentor somebody who's coming up only like a few steps behind them. So yeah. it tends to be people who are closer together in in experience level and age. Sometimes, But we also have people who are very seasoned and experienced who want to mentor. It's really, mm-hmm. but the key to it is people who have been supported by this community who now that they're kind of successful turn mm-hmm. around and say, now I want to give back. And that is, I, it's such a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
you know, it's, you never know what's going to come out of that. Those relationships are, it's, each one is different, the mentor mentee relationship, but it's at the heart of what we do. So yeah, Spirit Award winners, nominees, people who've gone through our labs, people who've, you know, had their films at Sundance or South by, Mm -hmm. we reach out to them. We say, would you mentor this person in our directing lab? And more often than not, they say, yeah, Mm -hmm. they're honored to be asked. And they, they like meeting a talented young filmmaker, giving notes, getting to know them. And that's really, um, that's, that's the heart of, of what we do. Yeah. And all of our programs, I should add, are our artist development programs are free. If you're accepted into them, we don't charge a tuition. It's like gotcha. we're out, you know, we're raising year round corporate sponsorship and foundation support so that we can offer this free to the filmmakers. Right. We are not profiting off filmmakers or saying we own your film or you have to pay us a tuition. It's mm-hmm. if you get in, y- you're covered. Um, and the idea with those is you have your one, you're working on a, on a feature film project, a specific project. Yeah. In the labs, in project mm-hmm. involved, it's a little looser. We're looking mm-hmm. for people who they might've, they, they're not coming in with one project. They okay. probably have multiple things they're working on, yeah. but it's a, a broader career support. Okay, cool. It, I mean, it all just sounds so cool. And as you say, it's $95 for the year and that's, that's yeah. crazy. And <laughs> I don't know how that's, <laughs> how that's still possible. I want to mention, I, I am pretty positive the single biggest group of members at Film Independent, uh, well, it's probably it's a combination of writers, directors, and producers. That's our core. But outside mm-hmm. of that group, the single biggest group of people who join Film Independent are actors. Mm. I mean, we have a ton of actors. And uh, I've, I've met so many actors at our events in our programs. Like, it's... Again, yeah. it's, it's you know, networking can be a little amorphous. You go to an event, you don't know what's going to happen. Sure. But um, I love it. I mean, actors actors are the lifeblood of movies Absolutely. and TV. So Yeah. And they love watching we, we, great films, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Josh, this is all so awesome. Thank you so much for, for like, taking the time. Um, yeah, my pleasure. It's great talking to you. So great. Um, I have written here, the Independent Spirit, the Film Independent Spirit Awards... April 22nd, IFC. Um, yes. What else do we need to know about this ceremony? I mean, it goes without saying, this is just such a completely different ceremony from any other year. It's going to be so different. I'm, yeah. I'm a little, uh, I'm ex- I, some days I wake up so excited about it. Other days, candidly, I wake up, I'm just like, sweating bullets. I'm like, how are we going to pull this off? It's so crazy. Oh. The Spirit Awards typically take place in person in a big tent on the beach in Santa Monica. And there's like a there's a TV crew filming this live event. You've got cutaways to the audience and the red carpet. Mm. You know, it's everything you think of with an award show. This year, mm-hmm. we're doing it. We will be broadcast on IFC. We have Melissa Via Senor as our mm-hmm. host. She's so funny and talented on Saturday Night Live. Thrilled to have her. Um, one of the great things about the Spirit Awards is we always have. Honestly, I'm, I'm patting myself on the back here, but we have great hosts. <laughs> whether it's Aubrey Plaza the last oh, yeah. two years. Or Nick Kroll and John Mulaney before, so, or, you know, going, we've had people like Samuel Jackson, Queen mm-hmm. Latifah, John Waters, like amazing, Sarah Silverman, like great hosts mm-hmm. who are really irre- irreverent. Yeah. Um, we give them free reign. And yeah. um, uh, and this year, it's Melissa Villasenor's first time doing it, and we're really thrilled to work with her. But it's going to be different. Like, she's yeah. not going to be in the tent on the beach. Right. So we're figuring all that out and how we're going to physically do it. Wow. Um, but we have a great producer, um, executive producer and director, Joel Gallen, in-house for Film Independent. We have Sean Davis is our producer and EP who's been doing the show for, I think, 18 years and is just brings so much knowledge to it. So we're really excited to do it. Uh, it's 7 p.m. Pacific time on uh, IFC. Um, yes. And uh, during but the again, evening. If, for once. During the evening, yeah, so this year, so normally it's a Saturday, it's on the Saturday before the Oscars in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. And because we, we love that, and in 2022, we'll go back to that mm-hmm. position. Okay. But for this year, because it's, we're not doing the physical event, yeah. I was talking with our partners at IFC and we said, since we're not locked into that time on the beach, could we broadcast it at night? And the reason to do it at night is, I mean, you just get a bigger audience on TV. It's like gotcha. more people are, are watching. So mm-hmm. Saturday afternoon is great for the physical event, but for the broadcast, we thought, let's try it. So we moved it to Thursday night before the Oscars. Okay. Gives us a little bit more breathing room. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I think, you know, again, it's just, to me, it is, 
it all goes back to the work. And when you look at this, the other thing about the Spirit Awards, it's it's great work. I mean, I truly believe it's the best films of the year, but also Mm -hmm. it's where you see like this year in our best feature category, um, I think out of the five nominees, three of them are directed by women. Yeah. our nominations, are, it's it's people of color, women, It's mm-hmm. there's much more diversity in the independent space and definitely at the Spirit Awards. And we work hard at that. Um, our nominate with the committees that we put together to select the nominations, so it's like those committees are diverse. It's people from all different aspects of the industry, different backgrounds, different ethnicities. And mm-hmm. it's it's not just an afterthought where you come up with the nominations and then at the last minute say, oh, we should have had a couple of women or, oh, we need a person of color. Mm-hmm. It's like from the beginning, it's <laughs> it's got to be there, right, with yes. integrity. It's like, this is who we are. This is the community. And um, you get the results. I mean, the work is clearly there. And um, yeah, it almost feels like you don't have to work. Film independent doesn't have to work quite as hard to make awards nominations reflect the od- the diversity of the audience. Yeah. I'm always so fat. I'm, I love talking about this kind of stuff too because I, every time an awards nomination, you know, announcement is made and people are up in arms about a lack of diversity, there sort of becomes this chicken and egg argument about is it the award show's fault? Is it the industry's right. fault for not giving those people the opportunities? Because as you're saying, your work your your work is on that independent level that is naturally more diverse. It there are more female filmmakers at that level, unfortunately, than there are yeah. at the studio level. I will say there's I it's that is definitely true. But even in the independent space, there's a lot of room for improvement. And and in film sure. independent too. I mean, we're looking at, you know, it's like if you look at the history of the Spirit Awards of the number of women nominated for best feature over mm-hmm. 36 years it's a small number and it's mm-hmm. like it speaks to the films that are greenlit and distributed but yeah. it, you know we just we all have to just do better and and it yeah. it, it has to change and it, it will change but this year i will say like of the nominated writers and directors for the spirit awards 57 percent are women and 48 mm. percent are bipoc which is that's so cool. That is great. That's how it should be. I mean, Absolutely. we shouldn't even be talking about how great it is, but compared right. to the past, it is it's a huge improvement. At um, some yeah, someday in the future we won't have to cite those statistics and it will just be Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then on on the TV side, mm-hmm. so we're dipping our toe in TV this year. We have five categories and one of them is best ensemble cast, which is going to I may destroy you, which is like mm-hmm. an amazing an, I still meet people who haven't seen that show. And I'm like, you just got to watch it. It's like far and away one of the best shows of the year. And the cast (laughs) is astonishing. Um, And we really modeled it on the Altman. It was the same thing. It was like, fine. It's, it's a cat. It's not just a big cast. It's a cast where they may be well-known. They may not be well-known that the performers, Mm -hmm. but they come together as this organic whole that just totally works in the way a Robert Altman did with his films. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. So, and it, you're right about the TV. It is certainly it is certainly time to recognize, talk about a, an independent vision, somebody like Michaela Cole, who I May yeah. Destroy You has come up in literally every single podcast interview of the last several months. <laughs> she has been mentioned every time and rightly so. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, well, Josh, thank you so much. I should let you go. This is great. Thank you. Yeah, great talking to you. So and, good to talk um, to you. Excellent to connect with with backstage. Um, everyone totally. here at Film Independent, we we really love you. We love partnering with you. Same. And uh, yeah. here's to when we get out of this pandemic. Here's to you know raising a glass together in person. Exactly. Yes, please. And now it's time to hear from Christine McKenna Torella, our backstage casting insider. I will let her take it away. Hi guys, Christine McKenna Torella here. If you've listened to this segment before, you know I'm a huge advocate for making your own content, right? For actors taking charge of their careers and empowering themselves with their own writing. It's not all Hollywood or bust. And platforms like the Spirit Awards show us that there are amazing independent filmmakers making important work out there. 
I believe that every person has a story that's worth telling and every person has a book or a play in them. And the challenge is not the story, right? The challenge is sitting down and writing it and getting it on the page. So what if you've never written a screenplay or a script before? Everyone has to start somewhere. So um, this week I'm going to share some free online resources to explore your writing skills and maybe set you on the path of writing the next big indie hit. In the most basic terms, you need to develop a storyline. Of course, you'll need a beginning, a middle, an end. You need to have clear characters that you're writing about. And storyboarding with post-it notes or actual drawings can be very helpful. And then it's the hard work of drafting and redrafting and drafting again, right? Until you get it right. There are lots of free resources out there. I've just picked a few for you guys to explore. So um, one is No Film School. They have a free 100 page ebook on how to write a screenplay. There's Future Learn that has a free two week online course that explores key concepts involved in the process of screenwriting. There is Film Launch that has a free virtual work session. They hold, I think it's weekly for scripts. So when you're ready to share with peers, you can get real feedback, uh, absolutely free. And for playwriters, the Theatre Maker Studio offers a 30-day script challenge. Get yourself from page to stage. (laughs) Don't forget, we actually have a lot of free content on Backstage about creator stuff. So we have the creator section on the website, and we also have a free creators newsletter that you can sign up to. Lots of awesome ideas and inspiration to be found on Backstage.com. On to the casting calls of this week. In LA, we have a commercial for real families of four for a living space brand. It is shooting at the end of the month in person in LA. It's paying the talent really well. So take a look at that if you have a family of four. HBO Max and the producers behind Magic Mike franchise and live shows. They're making a reality show, a sexy series they're calling it, that will transform a group of men into real life Magic Mikes. This really made me giggle. So I I thought I'd share. Maybe you've always wanted to be a dancer. One of you gents out there listening, take a look at the casting. And finally, the talent group is casting multiple roles in a print shoot for a national tech company shooting in early May in Pittsburgh, paying just under $2,000. It's really great pay for the project. Take a look at that. All the details are on the site for these castings. And as always, there are hundreds of castings for every type of actor in every region on the site. Head over to backstage.com to check more out. That's all from me for now. Break a leg in all your upcoming auditions, start that screenplay, and have a beautiful week. In the Envelope is recorded at Lotus Productions and Hyperbolic Audio in New York City, and Soundbox LA, Mark Rouse Studios, and Buzzies in Los Angeles. Thanks as always to our producer extraordinaire, Jamie Muffet, and to the team at Backstage, Samantha Sherlock, Mark Stinson, Caitlin Watkins, and of course, Casey Howe. Visit Backstage.com, and don't forget, you can subscribe to Backstage by using the code ENVELOPE at checkout for a free trial. That's right, 100% free. For more exclusive content, join us on Facebook and Twitter at In The Envelope, and subscribe, share, and leave a comment. Would you like us to interview next? Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time for another glimpse in the envelope.